Night gathers, and now our podcast begins. It shall not end until we're done talking. We are the princes that were promised. Welcome to the princes that were promised. It's me, it's Shawnee Wan, and joining me, as always, the warden of Nassau County, it's John. John, what's going on? How's how's it going, man? Long time no speak. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been, uh, I think, what, last week, November, I think, was the last time we hooked up. Yeah, and that episode seems lost to technical difficulties. At this point, it's just as well, because all the news we had is pretty much stale at this point. Really? I completely forgot what we were talking about. Yeah. There's, a, there's not much news out there. We're just, a, just waiting for this trailer to drop. That's basically what it comes down to, just waiting for the trailer to drop. Well, some things have come to the surface, which I feel we should discuss. Let me start off with what I think is the biggest piece of news. Oh, God. <laughs> King of the North, baby. You've been harping on this all week. Bro, I don't know. I love it the more I think about it. You know why? The news being, obviously, for anybody living under a rock, not paying attention to anything in the Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire fandom, Richard Madden, Rob Stark. Uh, Rob Tully, please. Or Rob Tully, if you will. I could go either way on it. Depends on my mood. But There's only one person that calls him Rob Tully, I think, the whole time. If ever, it's me. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely just you. I don't think that one's caught on yet. No, I never will either. Catelyn Tully, uh, you know, I think other people can, can dig that. A lot of Rob Stark lovers out there. But Richard Madden has won a Golden Globe for Best Dramatic Actor in a Series or miniseries, I'm not sure, but that's the big one. That's the big one for acting. You know, that and lead actress. I think it's great for Richard Madden because he, bro, he needed this. He needed this more than any other actor has needed an award like this before. This, this is the award that Hayden Christian wish he got. Oh, man. You know, like, they just needed that that movie, that TV show that just got, like, that recognition. Even if it was just a nomination. Even if it was just nominated. Right. It's a step up. I don't think that the show was nominated for Best Dramatic Series. I think it was just him, which means any credibility for the show comes from Richard Madden, and he's a Golden Globe winning actor now. So you would expect that the James Bond rumor, there's a lot more credence to that now, because he's a Golden Globe award winning actor, Richard Madden. I still rather see Idris, whatever his name is. Yeah. I'd still rather see him. He's too young. He's too young for the role. He has some gray hair in his uh, in his acceptance. I, I didn't watch the show, obviously. I, I can't do those award shows. I, I don't get me started, please. I just cannot. I can't sit through, you know, three hours of Hollywood. You know what I want. You know, I, I'm, I'm just going to leave them, leave all political talk out of here. But I just can't, you know. Patting themselves on the back. Yeah, right. Like, telling the rest of us how to live. <laughs> yeah. How great everyone is. How great this actor is. Right. I have no idea why I can't think of the name right now. The British office, David Brent, the guy that Michael Scott's based off of. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? Ricky Gervais. Yeah. You know who, you know who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. He sent out a tweet, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, about the, uh, the problem the Oscars has right now. Their show is the end of February or the beginning of March, mm -hmm. and they don't have a host because Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart, yeah. I don't know what his controversy is. I don't know. It's if they tell you to turn up, someone's feelings are hurt. It just gets, I don't know. So he's not going to be the host anymore. They have no host. So Ricky Gervais tweets basically saying, for the first time ever, the Oscars should try a show with no host. And while they're at it, they should have no audience and no show either. They should just tweet out the, <laughs> just tweet out the list of winners for anybody that still cares. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think about it, like why does why does anybody even watch this show? Anyway? I don't know why everybody gets so crazy. People yeah. do it. It's just like people who like like listen to the, like read the tabloids. They just love these people wouldn't care one iota about the normal working class person. <laughs> they don't. And like, but the normal work like this tunes in, watches these award shows, and like, oh my god, I can't believe that one lost that, that to that show. Uh, you know, yeah. I was hoping she'd win. Like, who cares? Nobody even sees most of these movies anyway. 
Right, especially the ones that the Oscars, you know, put out there. It's like, you know, best movie in a drama, the French movie, De La Vol, yeah. De Jou, you know, like, what? Nobody cares who wins. Nobody wants to see these people with the acceptance speeches. Give out, like, regular guy awards, like the award for best guy that's worked 60 hours a week to pay his mortgage in 2018 goes to Joe Blow. Comes up there farting and picking his nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> America. Gotta love it. So anyway, that's my, my lead news item was Richard Madden. He really needed that award. And I might actually check out The Bodyguard now because I do like Richard Madden. I may not like the character of Rob Stark as much as I used to, but I think Richard Madden's a good actor. And I'm glad that he's having, finally, having some post Game of Thrones success. So John, how about that season eight footage that we got with the end of year HBO trailer for 2019? You're talking about the one with um, Winterfell is yours, my grace. Yeah, yeah, which Sansa with her bitch face. <laughs> yeah, like you know, she's obviously not happy about it. You know, it's obviously um, the redoing over season one when Robert comes in, and obviously Sansa's like, you know, if yours is yours, oh, your grace. Yeah, good comparison. So good comparison. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this right now: that this is a shaggy dog incident right now. Okay. Dated back from the first picture we see that we saw from season eight when we see John and Sansa hugging, and you kind of see Sansa looking angrily in the background, obviously, it was that towards Danny. Now, you know, it's the same scene. I think this is a shaggy dog. I think they're setting this up as if we have to watch out for Sansa betraying John and Danny. Okay. And there might be some tension there, but that's not. That, There's no Sansa heel turn. No. They're going to cover up the real heel turn that's coming from Tyrion Lannister. So you're on board with that? You're on board I'm with on that? Board that. I'm, I'm on board with that. Because if, if there was a Sansa Hill turn, like a, a betrayal, they wouldn't show that. Yeah, okay. You're not going to give that away. I think it is to be expected that Daenerys would get a chilly reception, considering especially all that Sansa went through to get Winterfell back. And we know she's taking most of the credit right, there's for that. there's tension back there, like, oh, John, you're giving it up already, blah, 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 blah. I really didn't get a vibe one way or the other, but you do get Jon Snow in a brief shot. What do you think he's thinking in that scene? I mean, obviously, Daenerys can tell that Sansa's being a little bit standoffish in welcoming her and saying Winterfell is yours, my grace, accepting Daenerys as her queen. Do you think Jon is feeling a little bit awkward or yeah. stuck, stuck in the middle? You can tell he's a little apprehensive. Like, this is the moment I was not waiting for. He had to know. That his decision to bend the knee wouldn't go over well, right. especially with Sansa, and probably probably not with any of the other lords well, of the, the north in the Vale. The most of the north is going to look at Daenerys as like, oh, well, her father killed our former <laughs> yeah. lord and his brother, you know, his son. You know, that's going to be a hard time doing that. <laughs> and, get uh, some of uh, get some of Brandon's friends be like, yo, man, he killed Brandon. <laughs> yeah, there's no love for the Targaryens in the north. Right. So, which brings up the question is. How will they react when they find out that John's a Targaryen? Right. At will the same, they feel like, oh, like that. No wonder why, you know, no wonder why he's getting, making an alliance with Danny. You know, he's a Targaryen. Also, the hell with him. Fuck the Starks. But I like I was thinking about before, like going back to Sansa when it's known that John is, you know, Rhaegar's son and Lyanna's son. Even for Sansa, she's going to have to side with him. I mean, she's going to have to see that. Her father to so much to protect this kid. She's gonna have. I mean, if she then betrays John, she's also betraying her father. Obviously, it'd have to be realized that Ned knew that John is a Targaryen. So, if Ned was okay with this, they have to be okay with it. But I think there's a bigger reason for why Sansa would support John, knowing he is Aegon Targaryen. And that is, if Jon Snow isn't Jon Snow, and he's Aegon Targaryen... He doesn't have Winterfell. Who's got Winterfell, then? Sansa. It goes to Sansa. I mean, we're assuming Bran is right. not interested in being Lord of Winterfell. So let's just cut what we both said, and then do the two sides of Sansa right there. You have the side of Sansa that wants to rule, which we know she does. Mm -hmm. That will go in with what you say. And if she has any love for her, for the Starks, she can't betray Jon. I mean... My no. father, yeah, he lied. He lied to protect this kid. He gave up everything. That's what that's what it is to be a Stark, you know. It's, you know, right. 
my father's so honorable. Was, that was what's so honorable. He's gave his life up for this kid. And it's not like Ned lied. Well, he did for the good of House Stark, but it's more for the, the good of his sister. It was more to protect his sister's child. Right. He wasn't making any play with John, where he would be like, well, guess what, Robert? Guess what, House Lannister? I have a Targaryen. Yeah, he never did anything like that. <laughs> Looks like I have the upper hand right now. <laughs> 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 like Sansa's gonna be like Sansa's gonna be like this. Yes, you're the king. Congratulations, John. I mean, Aegon. <laughs> That's great. So, do you want to name me warden uh, wardeness of the uh, North or what? But yeah, I thought that was good footage. I, I thought it was safe enough without revealing too much. I'm sure that will be episode one. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be. Early on also, because they're on their way there. You know, maybe we'll it's get the a opening, scene. It's the opening scene. I don't know if they're going to- No, no, no. You think so? You don't think we get a scene on the boat? No, no. It's been said already. It's the opening scene. Okay. The opening, because they're mirroring season one. That wasn't the opening scene of Winter is Coming, though. But I get what you're saying. You don't need to establish any of these people the way they did in Winter is Coming. So, that makes sense. That's cool. That's fine. I like it, actually. I like it a lot. I'm telling you, Tyrion is betraying. I'm telling you, that's the betrayal right there. It has to be. It's a good red, you know, good shaggy dog, a good red herring. There's no situation that I can comprehend in which Sansa betrays either one of them. Not that I'm putting it past her character, but well, that's why that's why they're saying because it it's easy to, it's easy to show that off right away because you know everyone knows that Sansa's gonna you know what she is. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's going to betray. Yeah, you know, there's going to be tension from it. There's going to be tension. There's going to be, you know, some animosity involved there. But I'm telling you, the real betrayal is Tyrion Lannister, if he hasn't already betrayed them. But, but I was thinking about the other day. Yes. Jamie comes up. No, let's say, like, Tyrion knows about the plan that not to help out, et cetera, et cetera. Jamie comes up north and tells them that Cersei's not helping. Then it kind of falls a plan. So, then, Tyrion's gonna have to, you know, back out. He's gonna have to like use his uh use his mind and his mouth to back out of it or something, you know, to like change course on that betrayal. If there's anybody that can talk their way out of that situation, it is Tyrion. So John, did you hear the latest news? And this is pretty much hot off the press. And we're recording this on Friday the what is today? The eleventh? The eleventh. So on Sunday, the thirteenth of January. They just revealed the reveal date for the reveal of the date that Game of Thrones Season 8 will premiere. So basically, on Sunday, HBO will let us know the exact date Season 8 comes back. So I'm going for April. Hold on. Where's my calendar? April 14th. April 14th. I've probably written this down like seven times. I'm going to write it down one more time. April 14th. I'm going to agree with you. I know I'm wrong because I've been wrong so much. Actually, where's my calendar? When is Memorial Day? Exactly seven Sundays after that. Okay, then that's it. They're not ending it on Memorial Day. They're not going to go out with Memorial Day. I'm telling you. Although if it starts the 21st. Yeah, but then when their episodes will start, will be over on Memorial Day. They don't want that. Oh, you're saying Memorial Day is the 20th? Oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yeah. Memorial Day is the 27th, so yeah. So then it would end May 19th. It would end May 19th. It be the last Game of Thrones. Pressing thought. Okay, April 14th. I agree with you 100%. Is there a possibility it's April 7th? It's possible, but I, I, I'm going to shoot with them just hitting that marker before. Yeah. Okay. April 14th it is. Do you think we get a, uh, <laughs> do you think that HBO is going to have a big block of ice? No. That no. they melt out? <laughs> no, that, no. If they do, it's pre-recorded, it'd be done in two seconds. <laughs> oh, that was painful to watch, man. So what do you think we're getting the trailer? You know what? Maybe we get, no, we won't get a trailer on Sunday. Yeah, the following Sunday. Maybe the following Sunday. Well, you know, you know what? When does uh, True Detective start? That starts on I believe that starts January 13th or January 20th. Whenever True Detective comes back, that's when I think we get the that's when I think we get the uh, Game of Thrones trailer. And I think we'll get a heads up. Tune into True Detective 
right. season three. Because it's going to be a the, way to start to get people to watch True Detective. Yeah, get people back into it, because that was, that was almost a powerhouse for them. Watch True Detective, and then at the end of True Detective. Right, so... All right, so that's January 13th. Release date, publication is the 13th, trailer will be the 20th. No, actually, I'm sorry, the... Uh, oh, wait, wait. Oh, so True Detective starts actually this Sunday. All right, so maybe we'll get the reveal date and then the following week, episode two. Like, they'll do the reveal date during True Detective, before True Detective, and then the trailers the following week. Or is that too early? No, it's... Too- it's- well, for a teaser, you know, not much We gotta see some footage right now. We gotta see some some footage. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. It's gonna be here before we know it, too. It's been such a long wait, but it's hard to fathom that this is all almost over. Once the season starts, six episodes, it's six weeks, it's gonna be nothing. John, would you say you were a Dornish red guy or an Arbor Gold guy? <laughs> Vic Noble's what, what is this? It's a, it's a winemaker in France, Vignoble's Bardet. And they're making two wines, I guess, to celebrate the final season of Game of Thrones. One wine is going to be, it's just going to be called Dornish Wine, which is, they should rework that name. And then the other wine is going to be called Imp's Delight. Oh, I'm going to go with the Dornish. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Now we got Game of Thrones beer. We got Johnny Walker, White Walker. And we got, and we got wine for Game of Thrones. And HBO is going to begin filming the still not officially titled prequel series. Called The Long Night. That's not called The Long Night. Right. The, 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 the show about The Long Night that is not called The Long Night or possibly not called The Long Night. They're going to start filming that in the fall. They're going to film at the Canary Islands, which I think is, I don't know where they, I don't know where they are, but they're going to film a little bit there. And then they're going to go back Northern Ireland to Titanic Studios, which is good for Northern Ireland because. Their economy has been boosted a lot by Game of Thrones filming there, and also now with Game of Thrones tours of sets and locations. I think it's pretty cool that the prequel series will film there also, and it makes sense because the infrastructure is already in place, and some of the sets they use will already be there. They won't need King's Landing, obviously, but Winterfell and, I don't know, the Vale. I'm not sure where they're going to go in the lo- in the Long Night series. Still not excited about it, though. No, no, uh, we we uh, we texted off uh, off mm-hmm. air. I'm not. We're not going to re- right. go to it here. Right, right. Uh, but uh, let's just say I don't like things when certain things are being forced, or I feel things are being forced just to do when things are being forced as a reaction to outside pressure that should not be there. Is the best way we can put it. All right. The final bit of news I have. Totally unrelated to Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire. And that is the hot news, the rumor that an episode nine trailer is imminent. It's done. It's cut. It's ready to go. Is there anything that you can see in a Star Wars episode nine trailer that will make you excited for episode nine? You know what the problem is? No matter how good episode nine can be, Nothing is ever going to wash away the bad taste in my mouth about episode eight. Agreed. That's still there. It's still there. There was so much goodwill going into episode eight, and it's all gone. Yeah, I mean, no reason to, to, to get on Ryan Johnson again, but man, talk about a cold shower, huh? Yeah. Cold shower feels a lot better than that movie, let me tell you. Yeah. I don't think I ever asked you, what do you like more, The Last Jedi? Or Solo? Ooh, uh, Solo. Yeah, I think so. The Last Jedi is unforgivable. I, I cannot... <laughs> solo, solo is unnecessary, whereas The Last Jedi is unforgivable. It's unnecessary, but I can at least find something in that movie that's like, ah, it was all right. And a few fun moments. I mean, I liked... Um, what's his name? It was Lando, for the most yeah. part. Yep. I even liked the kid that played uh, Han Solo. Alden... I did, whatever, whatever, whatever that guy's name is. But it's just so unnecessary. And coming so close to the back of The Last Jedi, it never had a chance. Right. So anyway, that's pretty much all the news that's important. Um, I did see a headline about Kit Harrington saying that the filming of Series 8, of Season 8, broke the cast. But I think that was meant it broke them emotionally. The storylines, mm-hmm. the fact that this was the last time they were filming Game of Thrones. 
But I didn't read the article because it looked like it might be clickbait. Right, which most of that is. I don't like read those articles anymore because it's like stuff either we know or it's just like, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it was like a side article on Winter is Coming and it took you to a different site. So I'm like, this is not legit. And if it is legit, it's probably something that is not important. So we've decided in the lead up to season eight, we're obviously not going to do another rewatch of the entire series. Which, we, if you go back in that, I think we really botched that up last year. <laughs> yeah. I think we gave up too many points. Like the, the point scoring was just really off, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For some of them. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Well, I, I think it ended up like season four had the had the highest average, but it didn't have like any of the highest rated shows, at least nothing in like the top five, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, if you look back, season four, it's no season six, it's no season one, but I think season seven was better than season four also. It was a massive undertaking at a time when we had a lot more time to do something like that. Having more important roles at our jobs and less time, it makes more sense, I think, and I think it'll be more entertaining to discuss the main characters going into season eight, the journeys they've gone on, and where we think they're going in season eight, the characters that we decided on. We should call it like the crossing the eights. Nice. <laughs> eight characters we're going to talk about crossing the eights. Making or, the eights. Or, or, or it's called making the eights. Making the eights, baby. Just like King Bobby B. Yeah. yeah. Cersei Lannister will do first. Do you want to do Jamie after that and then go to the Starks? Yeah, I guess get the lashes out of the way. Yeah. So Cersei and then we'll do Jamie and then we'll go to the Starks doing Bran, Arya, Sansa. And then we'll do the big yeah. three as they're called by the fandom. Tyrion, Daenerys and Jon Snow. I would personally, I think you would too, I would personally like to end with Jon Snow. You know, any of those three characters we could end with. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely do those guys the last three. And uh, these are all the characters that have been around since season one, which is kind of crazy that no characters have come on in season two, season three. I mean, there are characters that have made it to season eight, but they just aren't part of the main Mm -hmm. core group of characters. You know, in a show like this, based on books like they're based on, is pretty amazing that these characters have not only survived the entire way, but they're still the main focus of the show and the book series, and it hasn't gotten boring. I think some of their plot lines got a little bit boring at points, particularly Cersei, Sansa, Arya in the TV show, not necessarily in the books, but things got interesting for them after that period of being a little bit boring. What do you think? Well, like Arya, I think would definitely be someone that, I mean, boring, nah, may not boring, but not so much, but just like less enjoyable. Yeah, more of a roller coaster, more of a peak and valley with those mm-hmm. characters. Boring is probably a bad word for it. But a character like Jon Snow, like Tyrion, I don't think there's been any point in their storyline where things have been mundane or predictable. And I think that's great. That's why these are such great characters and why this is such a great story. We're going to go through those eight characters and we'll have maybe another special or two leading up to series eight. I guess it really depends on uh, <laughs> on if it's April 14th or yeah. if, uh, <laughs> if, we, if we, we get that extra week. <laughs> yeah. So the next episode will be about Cersei. Check us out. Facebook.com slash The Promised Princes. We're on Twitter at Princes Promised. Read the Westerosi Companion at ThePrincesThatWerePromised.com. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher. We're on YouTube, we're on SoundCloud, we're on Spotify. Thank you for listening, and we will speak with you guys next time.